Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Got a new plant in the mail. No surprise there, always getting new plants in the mail. This is actually a plant that I got because I would like them in the backyard in the springtime, but they are a super hardy, really fantastic house plant. So I figured may as well talk about it. It's the cast iron plant. Cast iron plant is a fairly broad name. I'm talking specifically about the Aspidistra elatior. These are plants that are very easy to grow indoors and outdoors. If you go over the indoor care, talk about some of the troubles that may arise with them, though there aren't very much because as the name implies, this is a sturdy plant. This is a thug of a house plant. And the care on these is so simple. It's why they make such a great house plant. Indoors, low light, they're fine with it. They will perform their best in a bright room, right? And a lot of people like talk about plants that like things in dark locations. I'm not one of those people. I don't abide to that. That's like looking for a pet that doesn't need to be fed. Plants on these lists that you can grow in a dark room are just plants that die very, very slowly in dark conditions, which is the case for this one. I live for a long time without much light. So if that's, you just want some for like six months and I guess this would do for you too. You can give it a try. Most house plants were always saying water when the top inch, half inch of soil is dry. Not with the cast iron plant. They can take things on the drier side. Unless you live in a really arid environment then disregard everything I'm saying. I generally only water these when they're like 50% of the way dry. They can dry out all the way and not care. Just don't want it to dry out for a long time. Something I would pay more attention to for just a healthy root system on the plant would actually be the quality of the soil being that it needs to be airy, it needs to drain well, having some organic matter. Never let them sit in water because they are prone to rotting out if that happens. Fertilizing, yeah, you can do it. I would give them an all-purpose fertilizer, probably in the spring, maybe in midsummer. That's about it. I've always just used continuous release with them. Easy all purpose when you sprinkle it on top, work it in with your fingers, not much to it. Replace every six months, easy. And if you don't do that, they'll probably be fine. But when it comes to repotting them, that is something that isn't complicated. The main thing is just, it's best to avoid repotting them while they're putting up new growth because that tends to stunt their growth. Repotting them or dividing them, because they're very easy to divide their rhizomous plant so you can pull them apart and have plenty of them after you've been growing for a few years, you can spread them all over the place. But if possible, I would avoid doing anything with the root system, period, while they're putting up new growth. Because like I said, it tends to stunt the growth. So just go ahead and let them flush out. They only put up new growth once, sometimes twice a year. There are different types that are more vigorous than others, but I'm just talking about the regular Latior here. Typically if those, they're going to put up their new growth in the springtime. And then as a plant that is susceptible to rotting out, do not put them in a container that's too big for them, right? Just about an inch on the outside diameter, that's good. They don't need to be bumped up to drastically large containers. It won't usually go well for them. You'll end up having a lot of moist soil sitting around that root system and that can lead to issues with rot. Those beautiful long glossy green leaves typically last for about three years. Once you've had them for a while, it is usually a good idea to go in there and prune out the old foliage to open things up. Just like with the repotting, if you prune at the old foliage, if you have some crispy bits you wanna cut out, don't cut those out at the same time that you're doing divisions or anything like that. It's the plant where it's best to do one thing at a time with them. Meaning that if the plant is putting up new growth, say it's springtime, new shoots are coming up, that's not a great time to go ahead and cut all the old stuff back. Just wait for the new stuff to come up and then go ahead and prune out the old crispy stuff. They look so much better when they've been well-maintained and well-maintained means just going outside or to your container, depending on where you're growing them, right? and cutting back the old foliage. Usually a once a year thing. For me, when I've grown these outdoors, that's typically something I do in the late spring. Once the new foliage is up, I go through and I cut the old stuff out. If there even is any old foliage. Where I live, the cast iron plants don't tend to hold on to their foliage during the winter time, 6B, 7A. Just really depends on the winter time here. When that happens, I just cut everything back pretty much as it happens between January and sometime in March before the new foliage starts to come up. Okay, and then what about the problems? What could go wrong with this plant? I can tell you, not much. I already talked about root rot, easy enough to avoid. Spider mites, they do really enjoy these plants. Mealybugs do too. The nice thing about them is they tend to be a plant that is very easy to take to a sink or to a shower tub, whatever you have, and blast the critters off of them, and then hit them with a neem and repeat as necessary, usually about, you know, once a week, every 10 days for several weeks, make sure that you've nipped that problem. And of course, higher humidity levels also makes a very big difference for 
keeping away spider mites, usually. Not always. Sometimes they don't care. Sometimes things can be really humid and you're still spraying for spider mites. Makes no sense, but you end up spraying name once a week, even though it's like 75, 80% humidity. Sometimes they don't care and they just do what they want to do. Okay, pests, easy enough. Blast them off, spray things with the soap or an oil. The next thing would be brown tips. Here's the thing with that. It just, it happens. I've gotten so many messages over the years, not just about the Espedistras, but whether it's a Jersina or a palm tree, people are upset about their brown tips. And I see the picture and it's just, it's just this teeny tiny, itty bitty little brown tip. And I always just want to say what I'm going to say right now, which is sometimes you just got to get over it. Plants are rarely going to look perfect. If the crispiness is starting to spread and it's going down a significant amount, then I would make sure the plant's not getting strong air blown on it. It's not in a spot with any drafts and just up the humidity. Or maybe they're not getting watered enough. That's another possibility. Avoid drafts, make sure they aren't underwatered and uh, increase humidity if possible. Or move them to a spot where maybe the air is more still. Surround them with other plants. That is a really good way to bring up the humidity around them. Plants that like water, putting more cast iron plants around them that don't need a lot of water, well, that's not gonna do much, right? Maybe some spathophyllums, things in self-watering containers, just lots of moist soil around there. That's gonna help a bunch. Of course, can cut the brown tips off if you want to, if it's really bothering you, but you're still going to end up with a crisp line wherever you've made your cuts. That's just a matter of personal preference. Anytime you make a cut, you're also opening up the plant to being susceptible to diseases and other things. So you just gotta decide what you feel like doing there. It can be more bothersome, I get it, with a plant that only puts out new growth generally once a year, depending on which type of espedition you're growing. Typically the ladyors, like I said, you'll get a flush out in the spring, sometimes later on in the year, but they don't throw up new leaves throughout the year. So when you start to have brown tips, I can understand that being more bothersome with a plant that you gotta live with those brown tips for another year until you get new foliage. Okay, but let's say humidity's right, plants not being drastically underwatered, it's just not adding up as to why there are brown tips or maybe some yellow streaks, some other things going on with the plant. Check the soil, make sure you're not overwatering it because that can lead to various types of problems where you might have brown tips, but more likely you'll have discolored spotting inside the leaves newer growth, younger growth will yellow out first, more than likely when things are being overwatered. Yellowing of the leaves is really just giving the soil a sniff that can let you know if things are being overwatered, maybe there's some rot going on, maybe really high levels of metals or chlorine in your water, that could be a thing. I've never really heard much about bees having an issue with that, but it wouldn't shock me. Get online, check your municipality, see what's going on with your water, maybe you have really high levels of chloramines, fluoride, something going on in there. Maybe your plants don't like that. Okay, that's enough of that. This doesn't need to be a video about leaf discoloration. There are so many different causes. You're not likely to have many issues with that with these other than some brown tips and uh, maybe insect damage. Sometimes bugs will go and chew little holes in them. That can happen. Again, you prune it out once a year, get the old nasty stuff out and they'll put up new leaves that are nice and thick and hopefully it'll look good for a long time. Outdoors, zones 7B and 8 and up, you can grow the majority of the different types of elatiors, the different variations, lots of fun different ones to choose from. In zone 6 and zone 7, options are more limited, generally just the elatior, just your plain old green cast iron plant. And then there are some others that have been suggested for zone 7A that I'm going to be giving a try this year. Like I said, this one's going to be going in the ground. I'm going to wait for it to finish putting up its new growth. It's going to go in a spot in the garden with dry shade. I'll keep it consistently moist. It's going to be an area where the soil drains really well since it's its first year in the ground. Not just going to let it dry out and die, right? It's a new plant, but once it's established, the area will be dry shade for the plant where it'll get dappled morning light. May have to cut it back every year if it gets a lot of damage during the winter, which it probably will here because we have generally a few days where things drop below zero degrees Fahrenheit. It'll put up new growth and just keep doing its thing for years to come. There are plants that tend to stick around for a very long time. There's a variety of Aletior called Bubba that it's the same thing. Green leaves, but it's really big, chunky green leaves. I think it gets about three feet tall. I think that would make an excellent house plant and just a fun understory plant. I'll make fun understory plants. Uh, one with variegations, more cold hardy, is called Snowcap. Looks similar to this, but has white variegation just along the ends of the foliage. Stays smaller than the Bubba. Of course, most of them stay smaller than the Bubba. There are a ton to choose from. It would be a whole separate video talking about all the different ones I like, but I can just, hopefully there's some on the screen right now. Look at all these. Are you seeing them? These are some of the ones that are my favorites. I especially like, I can't remember its name, but here it is. 
with the lighter green variegation. I love that one. That's a stunner. Love the variegation on that one. Sometimes it's just nice having some big green leaves around the house. Cast iron plants really should be getting more attention because they're an excellent house plant other than the spider mite thing. But because of their size, like I said, usually you can just blast them off and do the thing with the soaps. They're not really all that hard to get rid of on these plants. That's another nice thing about them. It's just a leaf, right? You don't have a lot of crevices in this like you would with say a ficus or plants with lots and lots of little leaves or croton. If you get mealybugs or spider mites on one of these things, there aren't a lot of places for the critters to hide out. It makes it easier to get rid of. Main thing is staying on top of whatever routine you're doing to get rid of them. Just spraying them off one time, that's probably not going to do the trick, right? You're going to need to repeat Stay up with the soaps and the oils. I think I already said all that, right? If all the stuff to say. Video's over. You get it. Great plant. Comment down below. Do you have favorite varieties? What problems have you been having with them? Maybe people can help out with those problems. There's things I forgot to mention. So whatever you got to say, put it down below. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.